Hello everyone, welcome to another time lapse sketching tutorial. Today we will be sketching this street scene of Hanoi. I like this particular scene because there is light and shadow, there are overlapping elements, and there is perspective. There is a lot to draw, a lot of details to draw. So I started this sketch by sketching the tree because the tree overlaps the buildings behind. And this fountain pen that I'm using today, this is the Hero 501-1 fountain pen that comes with a fully nib, which is a bent nib. I'm using this pen with Sumi ink. I'm using this pen as a dip pen with Sumi ink. Sumi ink is basically ink created from Chinese or Japanese ink sticks. So later on after I finish this sketch, I will be painting this sketch with Sumi ink as well, instead of using the usual watercolor. So after drawing the tree, now I am drawing the buildings behind. Now notice I am drawing the top of the buildings and uh, so somewhat bottom of the building. Actually, those are the sign bots of the building. I wanted to draw the outer edges first because I want to draw the big shapes and then draw the details within the big shapes. This helps me uh, draw a bit more accurately rather than drawing from left to right or right to left. When I draw the outer edges first and then draw the details within, it has less chance of uh, me getting the proportion wrong. So drawing a street scene like this can actually be, well, it is actually quite complicated because there are a lot of details. And for the buildings in Hanoi, there are a lot of protruding parts like sometimes the balconies can protrude out or protrude in. There are air conditioning units hanging by the side of the wall. There are a lot of wires and cables hanging everywhere, signboards coming out or signboards that are below the balconies. So to draw all this, you really need to concentrate. And one thing that you can do to help yourself out is to draw the big shapes. So draw the general shapes first and then draw the details later on. Fill in the details later on. This will help you draw a bit more accurately. Sometimes when I draw from left to right, as I expand from left to right or right to left or from the center to the edges, sometimes I run out of space because I get my proportion wrong. If I start to draw too big, I um, all the other elements later on that I draw, they will be too big. If I draw too small, well, then all the elements later on will be too small. I have a tendency to draw uh, bigger and bigger as I go, so drawing the outer edges first will help me uh, fix the size, so to speak. So on the right side here, I have just drawn the cables at the top. Now the cables, the angles of the cables, they are almost vertical. Some of the angles, they are tilted slightly away from the vertical, but some are actually exactly vertical. To get those angles right, you would have to measure them. And to measure them, you can just simply take your pen and hold it against the cables, the angles of the cables, and measure. You can use this technique to measure basically anything in the scene. And after you measure the angle, just remember the angle and draw that. So here you see this signboard, the top edge of the signboard, that angle is wrong because, well, I think I got some mental fatigue. So I drew what I thought I saw rather than what I actually saw. So when you're drawing, you should be drawing what you see, not what you think you are looking at. And everything you draw, you really have to measure um, measure with other elements that you have already drawn or measure against what's in front of you. And for such scenes with a lot of details, sometimes it's very easy to get mental fatigue because there's just too much details. And it's very easy to get lost. So after drawing the right side, so notice I drew the tree first 
and then drew the left side and now I drew the right side and now it's all about filling in the details within. Now for this particular sketch, I did not follow the photo exactly because um, at certain areas I actually made some mistakes. I drew things that shouldn't be there or I drew things at the wrong position. So sometimes I may just add a few extra buildings or remove some buildings just to fit, um, just to fit the things onto the page. When it comes to drawing complicated sketches or very detailed sketches like this, draw from big to small and when you run out of space, you can just leave those details out. Don't try and squeeze details into tiny spaces where it's quite difficult to do so. When you have a sketch, it's good to have some areas where there are less details, where there is more white space and some areas where there is more details and this will actually create variation rather than have very dense details everywhere. For this motorcyclist on the left, if I were to follow the reference photo exactly, I would have to draw that motorcyclist on the pitch gutter which is difficult and it's not going to look nice. So with art, well, you can always change things. You don't have to draw exactly what you see. Here I move the motorcycle is away from the pitch gutter to the right side. By the way, this time-lapse video, it's actually created from a full-length tutorial I have made for my patrons. Patreon is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to support the artist that you like. And it is with your support that I am able to create so many videos on my YouTube channel, as well as the additional tutorial videos for my patrons and supporters who want to learn a bit more. So for the full length tutorials, they are played at normal speed and they have a lot more instructions and explanations to that. Okay, back to the sketch. Now in Hanoi, there are a lot of motorcycles and those are frankly speaking the most challenging to draw because um, of the shapes. There are circular shapes, there are, I mean, the shapes, they, they come in all sorts of shapes. So to draw them, you really have to concentrate and pay attention to the proportion. And usually when it comes to drawing motorbikes, um, I find that sometimes I do draw what I imagine the bikes would look like and that often results in the motorbikes um, not looking like motorbikes. So you really do have to draw uh, from what you see regardless of how strange those shapes look like. Because when you copy um, what you see in front of you regardless of how strange the shapes look like, ultimately they will look right when they are on the page. It's just the way our mind plays our tricks on us. So here I'm just uh, filling in some details for the buildings in the background. For these buildings, I used thinner lines. For the elements that are in front that are closer to me, I will use thicker lines. I'm using this fountain pen today with Sumi ink because this watercolor paper, well, um, the sizing has gone wrong, so it's not good for watercolor use, but for black and white, uh, no problem at all. For the Sumi ink, I added some water to dilute it first and painted the first wash. Basically, I painted over all the areas that are not lit by sunlight and I'm using this Da Vinci Cassano watercolor brush. It's a, it's a mop brush so it's great for covering over large areas. Later on I will be switching to a smaller brush to paint the smaller details. This is good for painting large areas for working very quickly. And once you paint the shadows, um, the mid values in, you can start to see the sketch come to life very quickly. 
So next up, I will paint with concentrated Sumi ink. Now Sumi ink is really nice to paint with. It dries to a matte surface and it has this very beautiful texture, this um, granulating texture that makes the wash looks really interesting. And you can use it just like watercolor. And it's quite safe to use with um, watercolor brushes as well because Sumi ink is just Chinese ink stick. They would grind it and then they would sort of add water to it. It's not like India ink where sometimes there is uh, shell lac and other uh, type of uh, ingredient that they add to the India ink to make it more permanent. When India ink dries, it will form a protective coating over the pigment particles to make um, the basically the ink waterproof. But for Sumi ink, Sumi ink is not waterproof. When it dries, there is no protective coating over the ink, so you can actually lift up Sumi ink even after it's dry. And if you are using it in a sketchbook like this, um, it may actually be good to use fixative to spray some fixative over the sketch so that when you close the pages together, the Sumi ink it will not rub against the opposite page and create unwanted marks. So that's the difference between Sumi ink and India ink, even though uh, both inks, they are black inks. So here you see, uh, I'm just painting over the black areas, the really dark areas. For this particular sketch, I only have two values. I have the mid-tones, I have the blacks, and I have the highlights. If you want to make your sketch look more realistic, you can actually have more tones like lighter tones, mid-tones, darker tones, and black. The more tones you have, um, the more time-consuming it will be, and of course you will need to do additional planning as well. For this last stage, I am using the white color art graph uh, block to add in some details. So this is the completed sketch drawn very quickly. You can work really quickly with Sumi ink. And Sumi ink is not totally waterproof, but it's actually quite water resistant. So the ink lines that I drew, when I painted over them with the watercolor brush, with the wash of Sumi ink, notice how the lines, they don't dissolve. They are actually quite water resistant. So this makes it good for sketching and for create for painting over with washes like this. And this is the texture that I was talking about, the very beautiful granulating texture from Sumi ink. You can almost see the pigment particles and I think they just look lovely. So this is the type of textures uh, that it's kind of difficult to create digitally. All right, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more about sketching, you can check out the many free tutorials I already have on my YouTube playlist, or consider supporting me on Patreon to get access to even more sketching tutorials. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.